What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, we are going to look at the new and improved audio warp feature inside of Cubase 12, so let's get right to it. So here I'm using a drum sample to demonstrate the improved audio warp tool. So I am using SSD5 and I'm going to show you really quick how to render these into separate MIDI parts and then render them into audio so then we could do our warping. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this region and then I'm going to go into MIDI and hit where it says dissolve parts. I'm going to leave it to dissolve into separate pitches and then I'll leave these options just as is and I'm going to hit process and you're going to see that it's going to grab all of my drum MIDI notes and it's going to put them all in its separate track. So here I know this is my kick drum, this is my crash in the beginning, these are my snares, this is hi-hat, and this is the open hi-hat. So now what we're going to do is we are going to render these into audio. So what I'm going to do really quick is just rename this. Okay, so I have renamed them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these clips. I'm going to actually extend these so that they're all the same lengths. And I am going to leave a little bit after because since I'm not doing the export, I'm not using the export selected events. I'm doing the render in place method. So I'm going to leave a little bit of leeway here so that the audio doesn't cut off. So the shortcut for that is command shift R. Okay, so here we have all of our audio and now I'm just going to put them all up here so that we could see it. And now we have all of our audio waveforms from this drum sample. So it's going to automatically shut off everything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick it in a folder and I'm going to close it for now. So here I have my MIDI render to audio. So let's go ahead and check out what this sounds like. All right, so now we are going to dive into the audio warping. So we are going to first turn on the audio warp tool. And the way we do that is we go up here to the time warp tool and you need to make sure that you're gonna hold it and then you're gonna drag your mouse down to where it says free warp. If you do warp grid, then you're gonna be moving tempo and that's not what we want. We want the audio warp. So once we click the free warp, we are now inside of the audio warp feature. So we can edit this one by one. So I could just create a line here and then highlight, and then I'm gonna create a little line here. And then now I can warp this little piece right here. So just a tip, you're gonna want to surround this line with other lines. So that way you don't move anything else out of position. For example, if I move this, it's going to stretch things before it and it's gonna stretch things after it. Look how it's moving everything before and everything after. So what you want to do is you want to actually surround this with these lines. So I'm going to create one here and then I'm going to create one right over here. Meaning now everything within these two lines, it's going to move and now everything else after it is not affected. The reason why you'd probably want to do that is the next beat could be in time and the one before it could be also in time. So you just want to manipulate the one in between each of them. But let's say that is the note you want to move. Now you have complete control. So now if I grab this and I move it, it's going to snap onto whatever quantize you have here. So in this case, I have use quantize and then I have it set to eighth notes. You can also put 16th notes so you can get all of these other beats in between. So let's just leave it here. And let's say I want it to be on the upbeat there. So let's see what it sounds like. And just like that, I move the kick drum around. So now if I hit command Z and I play the original, And then I'm going to redo that. All right, so you heard that this one kind of sounded a little bit different than these. This one sounded a little bit higher pitched. So I can easily just create, let's say, another one right here. And then I can stretch this out so that the full length of this sample could play out. So let's listen to this now. So just like that, you see that I retained now the full body sound that it originally had. So these are the kind of things that 
people don't really talk about when you're using audio warping. So I want to make sure that I mention it here so that you can be careful on how you audio warp because it can change the sound depending on how you use it. So following these tips and methods can make it really easy and at the same time can make it really hard to use the audio warping tool. So let's say you want to move around not just this one track, but you want to move everything. So if we highlight everything like this, and then go back into the audio warping tool, you're going to see that if I create a line right over here, it's going to automatically create the line against all of the other regions that we have selected here. If I hold option on my keyboard and I press H, I can blow up the audio waveform so that you could really see what's going on, especially with the closed hi-hat here. So let's say we wanted to move all of this over to the upbeat. We can do that because we have them all selected. So let's hear it now. So notice how we didn't surround this line and it created a shift before and after. This time, let's create surrounding lines. So let's put one right here and let's put one right over here so that it won't move anything before or after. And again, we're going to put this on the upbeat here. It's going to be a little bit fast. Let's just stretch this out just a little bit. Let's put a line here and then stretch this out a little bit here. So you see it's very easy to create lines in different parts or different regions at the same time. All you need to do is select them all and then move them around. So now the next example is let's say you record live drums. Of course it won't work with these MIDI drums because they're already made into samples so there's no phase issues that you need to worry about. But let's say you do have phase issues that you need to worry about and you want to make sure that as you're audio warping you don't fall into any phase problems between between all of the different microphones. Let me group these together in a folder. I'm gonna highlight all of these just as so, and I'm gonna click where it says move selected tracks to a new folder. This is going to be my drums. So now when we look at the folder, it has two new buttons here. So the first button is group editing. And the second one is phase coherent audio warp. Now the group editing is whatever you're doing to one, you are going to do to all. If I turn this group editing on and I go to the time warp tool, I no longer need to highlight all of them. It's just going to place all of these different audio warp points on all of them without me having to highlight all of it. So you see that I start to place more and more of them start appearing in all the other tracks. But now let's say you have a multiple mic situation. You wanna make sure that this button is on. So phase coherent audio warp. So the reason why you would want to have this is because again, you don't want anything to fall out of phase since you've recorded it with live mics and a player, of course. So you wanna make sure that button is turned on before you do any audio warping. So now I'm gonna show you one more trick that you can do with the audio warp, and that is copying and pasting the audio warp points to a completely different track without having to redo it or re-click all of the different points that you used in a specific instrument. So for example, if I wanna copy the audio warp data from the kick drum to the snare drum, I don't have to redo it again. So let me show you how you do it. You're going to highlight this and I'm just going to click random points here, but just for example purposes. So you can see that I can copy all of these points, no matter how intricate you can copy it and then paste it into another waveform. So let's go ahead and say, this is it. This is what I want to copy into my snare. And now you're going to see if I highlight this, this doesn't have any audio warping information, but this one does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Click on this region, gonna go to audio, go to where it says advanced, and then go to where it says copy warp markers from selected event. Now you can easily go into, let's say something like key commands, open up this window, go to where it says audio, and then you see I just highlighted that one. So it's going to highlight it here. And if you need to search for it for whatever reason, you can always just type it up here and it'll pop up. And you could create a key command for this so that anytime you need to copy and paste audio warp markers from different places, you already have a key command set up for that. So you can click that. And now I'm going to go into my snare track, go back into audio, go to advance, and then to hit paste warp markers. Now you're going to see that when I highlight both of them holding shift, they have the warp markers in the exact same place. That way you don't have to go in and put in all of those 
little locators every single time you need to copy and paste it in the same session. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, if you're brand new to Cubase and you want to learn how to use Cubase, if you visit the John Moon Studios website, which I will link down below in the description, you can purchase my Cubase course, which will teach you how to use Cubase and take you from a beginner user of Cubase all the way up to an advanced user and learn what the interface and all the features are about. The great thing about purchasing this course is that all of the future updates will be completely free. So as new updates start coming out and new features start happening inside of Cubase, I will upload new videos that will help you understand these features in much more details. And you can find that again at johnmoonstudios.com. Don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you guys soon.